Hi, and welcome to the final section, part six of module five of ORT 5 MES. In this part, we're going to be looking at redesigning care with lean thinking. The aim of redesigning care is to review the patient journey through the healthcare service and also to implement value adding steps or remove unnecessary steps to improve that patient journey. Redesigning care for the purposes of this particular module will utilise what we call lean thinking principles as the mechanism for improving the patient journey. Lean thinking was actually initially developed by Toyota Motor Corporation in 1930 and the focus was on the needs of the customer rather than the needs of the organisation at the time. Now, this strategy also aimed to improve quality whilst also reducing costs. So if you convert that into the healthcare perspective and move it away from cars, um, lean thinking is utilised to improve the patient journey rather than the customer journey so that the process is efficient and also so that it's safe and of high quality. For if you would like more information about the development of lean thinking, take a look at this video called The Start of Your Lean Journey. You'll find the link to the video in, um, on your LMS. Um, it is an optional video, so if you'd like more information, um, take, it, take a look. So for task one, I'd like you to read the first section of the paper by Ben Tovum, 2008, um, and also the Good Start section of the Jones and Mitchell paper, um, which is an NHS report, and answer the following questions. One, why is it valuable to assess a healthcare process from the patient's perspective and explain what process mapping means? So use the Ben Tobin paper to answer those two questions. And then in order to answer what are the five main benefits of lean thinking, um, access the Jones and Mitchell NHS paper. Lean thinking can be applied to all sectors of health and a very good example of lean thinking applied to eye health care can be seen in a recent Dutch study which explores the effectiveness of a lean cataract care pathway and you'll see the um, paper by Van Villet. Now I would like you to read that paper and answer the following questions. In Australia, how do our cataract pathways differ in terms of the workforce involved? Explain the difference between the lean cataract pathway and the traditional pathway. What were the outcomes of the lean cataract pathway in terms of effectiveness and efficiency? And four, what was the main issue experienced that resulted in a gap between actual and expected outcomes? Now it's worth noting that lean thinking is not the only quality improvement methodology available to healthcare. One of the most common alternative approaches is the use of Six Sigma. Um, there is also the combined approach called Lean Six Sigma. So I, I want you to read the Six Sigma section of the Fraunfelder paper, page five to six, and answer the following question. What are the main differences between Lean Thinking and Six Sigma? For task four, I'd like you to watch the videos called Lean Thinking and value stream mapping basics which are from MIT uh, in order to gain a better understanding of the concepts learned so far. Once you have completed this, attempt the following. Reflect on a hypothetical patient who has glaucoma and is being seen in a general eye clinic at a hospital, for example, the Royal Victorian Eye Hospital. The patient needs an eye examination including an OCT and a Humphrey visual field assessment. The OCT and visual field were unplanned as the patient is newly diagnosed. Note that these instruments are not available in the general eye clinic but elsewhere on another floor within the hospital. The OCT is performed in MedPIC on the first floor by medical photographers and the visual field is performed by orthoptists on the fourth floor and the general eye clinic is located on the third floor. A lot of you would be familiar with this concept because you would have had your placements at the IND hospital. 
I want you to develop a hypothetical process map for this patient from beginning, where they arrive at reception, to the end, when they actually leave the hospital. And think about things such as, which clinicians will the patient see at each step? What investigations do each perform? How and who organises the additional tests? And at what process does this um, occur? At what point in the process does this occur? When are these additional tests performed? Does the patient need to actually wait for the assessment? Does the patient need to return to the general eye clinic once the tests are completed? And once they're completed, what issues can you identify with this process? Are you able to suggest any strategies for improvement? You can assume an ideal situation when there's actually no barriers to change. Whilst not necessary to perform, have a think about how a value stream map would be developed. This is a great task to do together with the rest of your group. For task five, watch the very first few minutes of the video called People, The Heart of Lean from about zero time to uh, just over a minute in. This applies to you. What are the two primary messages that Annalisa Weigel highlights at the beginning of her lecture? As the future orthoptic workforce, the advancement of the profession is actually in your hands. Your motivation and interest to take on new roles and to engage in innovative models of care and also quality improvement projects will determine the orthoptic workforce and skill mix in 10 years time or beyond. So something to take away from this um, in conclusion is the phrase by Barack Obama who said, change will not come if we wait for some other person or some other time. We are the ones we have been waiting for. We are the change that we seek. So have a think about that and how that's going to apply for your career and your future. This brings us now to the end of module five, the final module for ORT5 MES. And I hope that you've enjoyed the coursework this year. Good luck.